Hello, hello. Okay, I think I'm live. Um, so I had a double take there. Don't know if it was like live a minute ago, because I think I saw Melanie message me on there. But anyway, all righty. So um, hi, uh, it's been a while. Uh, not the longest while, but uh, it's been a little while. Um, and what, and what, I have a list, I have two lists of things to talk about. Um, and I kept putting this off because, um, well, one, I was a little bit blocked with what to talk about and, and stuff. And then, and I kept remembering, um, so uh, Cicero used to say, uh, rule number one of public speaking, have something worth saying. And <laughs> eventually I just came to the conclusion that, well, Cicero didn't, no social media. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I think some of our philosophies <laughs> need re-examining, um, but I, I still think he has a point. Anyway, hi Mel, there you are. Hey, hey, how you doing? Um, so uh, I have some things worth saying, Ish. Um, I should I should get the books things out of the way. Like the <laughs> you guys are gradually training me. <laughs> Because that's what that's what you're interested in. Um, so Karma One is done, and uh, it's it's basically with uh, the JIT team at the moment. Um, so uh, next few days, we'll start uh, firming up the date to put it out, um, and hopefully, all is well and it doesn't need um, like rehashing or anything. Uh, I mean, it's, it tends to be the later books, you know, where things get a little bit more complex and crazy um, and you have to kind of hold everything in your head. And uh, that's where like little slips kind of pop in like, hey, wasn't so and so left handed. And I didn't think that la 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 was anyway. So um, that's Carmel One. Let me go through it. Uh, the Maze Runner <laughs> one <laughs> is halfway done. So halfway, halfway. Um, so that will be three books that have been saved up and they're all going to the editor at the same time. Um, so that'll be a nice little piece. Oh, and I have good news about that. That's going to audio like almost immediately as well. Um, so that'll be cool. Um, I do have a question though for you guys. So hi, if you're, if you're watching, like feel free to jump in the chat and, and communicate with me. It'd be good to know who's here. Um, I, I have a question about the Bentley series. For, so for those of you who have read Bentley, uh, I think the official title is something like uh, The Sword Madge Chronicles. Um, I'm thinking about, like, bear in mind, I've been caffeinated this morning. So <laughs> take take that as you will. Uh, but I'm thinking about doing some more books in that series. Because obviously, like, um, I, I paused it uh, and there were still, like, loops open. And uh, I had intended, like, at least another couple of books for it, maybe, maybe more. Um, so I'm kind of curious as to whether there's a demand for that. Generally, if people aren't asking for stuff, uh, what, whatever it is, uh, I tend to assume that they're not waiting for it and it's, it's not a big deal. Um, but I, I would like to know. That would be interesting. Um, not that I want to take too much focus away from Karma One because uh, I'm, I'm kind of head down on, on that right now. But, um, yeah, if you have any thoughts on that, let me know uh, or, or message me or whatever. Because um, I'd be curious. It'd be nice to kind of alternate between once Mains Run is done, and remember that's the working title, not the actual title. I'll, I'll We'll decide on the title at some point. Um, but once that's done, it's, it's nice to kind of alternate between stories and series. Uh, so, yeah, I'll be interested. You know, I read Bentley. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, if you like Molly, then you'll like Bentley. So there we go. Um, cool. All right. Uh, so wh what else is going on? Um, what should I pick out? I'll just go through my list and sequence. Uh, blue. So I have the, 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 <laughs> the word blue here. <laughs> so not that you can tell, but I tried to dye my hair blue. And um, it was like a blue hair coloring for brown hair. And all it's done is turned it black. So there we go. Black hair. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> um, and it doesn't, it doesn't show up in, in any light. Well, like daylight, but 
when am I ever in daylight? So I don't know. It might be uh, not worth bothering with. Like for the carnage that it created, uh, like in my bathroom. <laughs> like, okay, you'll be pleased to know my shower curtain survived it just. It does have a slight hint of blue. What was impressive, though, were the different hues and shades of blue that came out of my hair. It was nuts. Um so, uh, yes, a, a unicorn did look like it had been murdered and there was a massive cleanup operation. So for, for all of that drama, like, I'm not sure whether it's worth it. Like, with it being like a conditioner, which is what it's meant to be, like a conditioning colour, um, I figured may, maybe it will make less mess, but it didn't. So, I don't know. We'll see. Watch this space. Well, not that you'll even be able to tell. I mean, I can tell because normally it's kind of like a a shade of brown but anyway um so Mel's going to look at Bentley oh cool <laughs> good stuff um what else is going on what else um oh yes I'm rather impressed that you can't see all the bruises that I'm covered with <laughs> I tried moving furniture to clean and honestly it looked like I'd been beaten up so um the, the the traumas of being uh, at home, I guess you, you had to find all these projects to do. And one of them is, uh, you know, moving furniture so that you can hoover in all the right places. So, <laughs> oh, so Larry's saying, yes, please add more to the Bentley series. Okay, cool. All right, this is good to know. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. This is great. Um, it kind of doesn't fill me with confidence when people are like, yeah, what series was that? <laughs> it's like, oh, oh. Having said that, I did do a terrible job at telling anyone that it was even out. I think we kind of just released it on Amazon and that was about it. Um, so anyway, we should do better. All right. Um, so what else is going on? Oh, push pulls. So um, I would have done some more uh, like practice, you know, piano practice things, sing along, whatnots, uh, over on Facebook, Facebook Live, um, except uh, I kind of felt blocked with the singing. I felt like I wasn't making any progress. And uh, so obviously I, I, I thought about it because that's what you do when you can't do something, right? You, you analyze it. Um, and so that had me kind of stuck for a few weeks um, and I wasn't really making progress and I didn't really have the energy to do it and blah, blah, blah. Um, then I came across this thing and I wonder if I've, yes, I've got it here. It looks like something out of a man drawer, doesn't it? You know that drawer in the kitchen where you put all the knickknacks and bits and bobs that uh, a man would like say, no, 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 don't throw that away. That's a screw for such and such and such and such. And it's going to become useful. And like when you move house, like <laughs> you end up throwing almost all of it away. Um, so, yes, it looks like something out of a man drawer, but it's not. It's, it's called a singing straw. And it's to create resistance when you like you, you phonate through it. And... Um, and it causes like a uh, uh, pressure going back against the like the uh, the vocal folds we call it. I think they mean the vocal cords, like in English, um, or whether that's a singing term. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so new to this. I'm still trying to decipher everything that they say. Um, so anyway, this is caused this like back pressure, and it kind of evens it out, and it teaches the vocal folds to be in the right place for singing, and. I kid you not, this has saved my entire like potential singing career um, because all of a sudden I, I can see progress and I can see like a way through. Like my biggest problem recently has been like not just developing those other registers, but like slipping from one register to another. And apparently this is common. This is like the big thing about learning to sing and like the practice and exercises that you have to do and all the rest of it. So like no surprise, but I freaking sucked at it. So um, speaking of sucking, we're blowing. <laughs> oh shit, um, unintended. I was going from a purely like physical kind of like straw thing. So. Um, 
anyway, the uh, the straw is a lifesaver and I shall be practicing with it more. So um, this is something that you have to do like several times a day. And um, so like it, it, it goes with me from wherever I'm sitting and I'll like, work on it for a few minutes. It's helping. Um, so I've even got to the point where I'm like, breaking down the songs and like learning this it's like you remember some some of you may, may not remember if you weren't over on facebook at the time but um the, there was a whole thing where i was ranting about how difficult it was to like play and sing at the same time this is a common thing apparently like um i know alan who plays the guitar was saying yeah it's it's not uh, it's 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 hard um so when I learned the piano, one of the big things was like you practice one hand and then one hand and then you put the two hands together. And then putting the two hands together was a task in itself. And sometimes it was relatively easy and sometimes it was freaking hard depending on what you were playing. Um, but there's there's this layer where in this, I feel it using the same part of my brain where I'm putting the hands together with the voice. And so... I don't know. It's fascinating to me. It's probably like dull as <laughs> anything to you. But this is whole process that I'm going through where I'm learning. And, and the thing that I've found is like not to try and learn them all separately, like until they're perfect. Like, I don't know, like I'm really learning that um, not that I'm a perfectionist, like I am like the opposite of a perfectionist. But sometimes there, there comes a point where you go oh I've really got to dig in and like focus on this and get really good at it and there's a like a little bit of a hint of a resistance to like not doing it uh like wanting to get one hand completely right before you put it all together right um but that I, I find like I have to start at the other end so like trying to put it all together to begin with to get a, f a feel for it then break it down and then put it together before I feel before I feel over-practiced in any one aspect of it. Um, so that's kind of where I'm, I'm heading. And then it becomes incremental, like uh, increases where you break it down and then put it back together again. And I can kind of see how, like um, I used to do like orchestral stuff at summer school and uh, the, co the conductors, were, they were amazing. Oh my God. But they used to like break it down and deconstruct it and then put it all back together again. And, I didn't really understand the method at this level until I started doing this. So um, incremental uh, um, improvement is, is kind of what I'm shooting for. Um, so I've had some incremental improvements on some of those songs that I was practicing. Um, and at some point, if there's demand, <laughs> It's like anything. If there's a band, if people want it, I, I will do some more of those kind of practice hang sessions um, with non-performance performances. Um, as long as you understand that, like, I am still a beginner in all these things. Um, but that's been um, that's been good. I've I've had some progress on that recently, like in the last day or two. So that's that's been kind of cool. Um, and then music production was another thing. So. Um, uh like electronic music is like a whole thing um and but in order to learn how to produce tracks and even create my own backing tracks which will then mean that I won't have to play the freaking piano like the every time I want to perform a song um and I think I think there's a potential to get quick at being able to produce like a backing track that may be original or not you know I, either or normally it's going to be a, tw a twist on whatever right um and then I can perform more tracks more quickly because say my I get my voice sorted out and I actually learn to sing um it's quicker to pick up a song than it is to learn an entire piano piece and this is kind of where I was going with like the jazz piano and being able to do improv but interestingly enough the the music theory that I need for improv is the same kind of music theory that I need in order to create these backing tracks and so it all becomes one whole kind of awesome thing um, it's just there are lots of moving pieces that I've got to kind of stack together and keep moving and keep evolving and um, it takes it can, it takes caffeinated brain time to be able to do that, or at least semi-caffeinated brain time. There have been there have been times, three o'clock in the morning, where I've sat playing the piano for a few hours, and uh, 
that's kind of cool. I like it. I like it. I think it's good for the brain. I really do. Um, so Melanie says I downloaded Awakening, so Adventure Series 1. Brilliant. Brilliant. I'm glad. Let me know what you think, Mel. Um, I trust your judgment on these things. So cool. All righty. Um, so what else? And that's on Kindle Unlimited, isn't it, Mel? I think that's – so if you're on KU, you can read it for, for free. Um, it should be. Anyway, uh, the only problem with that <laughs> is that as soon as you download something, like if you're up to your limit, you have to like return another book. So it kind of keeps you – oh, you can see a bruise. Look, there you go. Um, so, yeah, it keeps, it keeps me like – making sure that I get through the stuff that I've already downloaded. Yeah, it is. Thanks, Mel. Cool. So, yeah, these brews, oh, man. Like, so I was even stuck, like, not being able to practice the piano or do press-ups or anything. or I, And even, like, typing, I couldn't do. So I was, like, semi-editing stuff um, because, like, I'd hurt my – I'd overstrained my forearms, like picking up the sofa. And, oh my God, they were like burning up, and they, they, there was like these big lumps here. Like I don't know whether it was bruising. I think it was more like strain or something from. Um, oh yeah, she can see my bruises on both arms. Yeah, um, and I had on my legs as well. So I put together this smart desk. I think it's called so that. Like, so that's in the other room. You know, when I have my, my desk set up with computer and cameras and all this kind of stuff, um, I needed more space for the computer because, like, it was an ac it was basically an accident waiting to happen the way that I had it set up. So I got this, this smart desk, which has, like, a stool, like, kind of folded onto it. And it was, it was like, you know, you know how you have arguments with um, your ironing board? Does, it, does anyone else do this? Like... <laughs> like fucking piece of shit <laughs> you try and beat it up and you're the one that comes off like with all the bruises so I had that and this was like a few weeks ago and like I was when was it? it was like last week I was climbing into bed and I think I must have walked into something or w walked into it more more likely and forgotten about it and like I'm I'm kneeling on my knee and there's this bruise like that okay I'm exaggerating so it was like that big bright purple i'm like oh my god no wonder it's killing me so yes melanie gets what i mean right yeah you argue with the ironing board yeah so oh, man so this desk is the bane of my ex existence I'll, I'll, I'll show you i'll show you it when i'm when i'm in there and i'll show you like all the it's meant to be like super whizzy but it's it's not it basically just tries to kill me every time i move it Maybe that's what I did. I think I tried to move it like three inches so that it wasn't over my keyboard. Um, so anyway, bruise number one. Well, number one of this like particular story occurs. And then like I do this the other day and like the, I've got now I've got bruises on top of bruises from this entire palaver. So, um, yeah, dangerous life <laughs> being home. <laughs> cleaning um anyway so that was it that uh what else was going on to oh okay so next thing languages um so for those of you who who have been reading uh, author notes for any length of time you know that i try and teach myself languages partly because it's good for that part of the brain but partly just because i want to know and like if you're into astrology i'm starting to really understand what my uh, Sagittarius rising I've got a whole bunch of planets as well it turns out in Sagittarius which I hadn't noticed until this week um but yeah a whole heap of stuff going on in Sagittarius and first house right so this is about identity and how we like see our position in the world and all this kind of stuff and and Sagittarius rising which is what I'm, I'm describing to you um is well, basically, it's where this constellation Sagittarius was on the horizon when you were born, right? And um, the, so, first of all, they're known for being gullible, which I hadn't realized. Like, in my, my actual studies of astrology, like, that hadn't come up. And then uh, it was on Instagram that someone was like, oh, yeah, Sag rising. When they're talking about me being gullible. Oh, right. So everyone knows about this except me, which is like classic being gullible, right? So, um, so, so there was that. But also, like Sagittarius are really into um, like lots of ideas. So, like 
talk talk to the Sagittarians that you know who are like who their sun sign is uh, uh, Sagittarius, and they they tend to think in in large scale. They're they're concerned with like society and civilizations and what ifs and lots of like different cultures and all this kind of thing, different philosophies. Um, they're they're a good time to hang out with. Um, well, I would say that because that's my rising sign. So. I'm starting to recognize that in myself and I'm like, oh, that's why I'm so scattered with everything. And that's why I won't pin anything down. I'd like on some level, it's good to be a writing, but like a, good to be a writer to do that because then you can write about all of these different concepts and ideas and you, you research, you research these things. And so, so writing is a really good all encompassing kind of thing for Sagittarian like people um except my problem is it's like yeah but then you've got to identify as a writer and as those of you know like I, I don't even identify as a writer so it's like I'm kind of screwed really um but at least recognizing it like these are points it's kind of like um oh that makes a little bit more sense okay so Melanie's saying that she's a Scorpio and an introvert so now it makes sense. I, I have a natural affinity to Scorpios. I love Scorpios. Like all my, all my closest people are always Scorpios. So, I mean, that's not to say that I'm, I uh, discriminate based on what someone's sun sign is. Um, but uh, there, there just happens to be a correlation there. Yeah, Scorpios are great. They, they tend to be deeper thinkers. They examine like the, the deeper aspects of things. They don't shy away from... Uh, emotions or, or deep dives in in anything um so that's kind of awesome yay I'm, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that Mel so that's cool um so uh languages coming back to that point um so I had been learning Hebrew and Arabic at the same time and it was hard because obviously like there's there's the new like um well, it's new to me, like script. Uh, what do you call it? I can't even remember what you call it. Like, there's completely different alphabet. Um, so, uh, so towards the end of last year, I was like, oh, I'm so tired. I can't do this. And I need to put it on hold. So I put it on hold. And then um, I started up with Hebrew again. I think I've explained this to you before. Do you remember me talking about Mossad 101, the show on Netflix? I'm going to end up rewatching it. I know I am. Um, but it was like, it, it started off as like a spy school kind of thing. And it was all Mossad. So it was all in based in Israel. And, um, uh, and most of it was in Hebrew. But then when it came to like bits where they were actually speaking Arabic, they put it in the actual Arabic, which is like, oh, please fill my heart. This is so cool. Um, so anyway, that's like my main driving force behind that. Um, so I'm... Um, I've gone back to revise. So I'd finished like an entire like 10 unit module and uh, I'd started on the next unit and I was just like, oh, it's getting too much. Um, so I've gone back to, and then of course I've had like a six month break on it. So I've gone back and started revising that and it's kind of, it's all coming back to me now. Um, and then also, damn it, Worf. Um, I've been watching Deep Space Nine. Oh my God, I'm nearly at the end of Deep Space Nine like literally on either the last or the second to last episode it's crazy um but yeah i've been learning klingon a little bit it's slow going it's slow going um one of one of my friends on twitter who's also like a, a star trek uh, who's more of a star trek nerd than i am um had actually like gone through the entire thing like 3 months into lockdown and i'm like wow that's impressive um so i don't know i might try and keep that up keep it that's what she said huh um however uh, I've not been very good at like keeping that moving I've been better at the Hebrew so it doesn't matter I mean like I think you can have one primary language and then a secondary one that you kind of dip into when you feel like it I think that's legit, right? Oh, oh, and I'm trying to practice my French. So I'm listening to French podcasts about, mostly about American politics. It says that it's world politics, but most of the time that, well, because of what's going on in America, it tends to center on discussions about American politics. So that's interesting. Um, 
and then I follow a few things on in French and Italian just to kind of keep my hand in. But I've discovered these uh, texts. What are they called? Books. <laughs> Books on uh, it, it's called Prisma text or something or Prisma prismatic some pr pris prismatex anyway basically what they do is they write it in english or it's it's like classics in english but then they start replacing more and more words with french or whichever your chosen language is and um it helps you to kind of increase your vocabulary and so on and so forth um and get used to reading in your language um so i've got those sitting on my kindle waiting to be read um, I think the real holdup is the Dalio stuff because there's I'm still reading that. Well, he keeps re re releasing chapters, like he's writing a book but releasing chapter by chapter um, as he finishes the research and finishes the um, the the chapter. Um, and I think that's good because it's better than waiting for it to all kind of come out at the same time. Um, but it's really good books must look up what they are yeah um i'll uh i'll try hang on i can probably no i can't uh remind me and i will post it under this video uh what what it is like even the name you can google it um it's really cool if you're trying to learn a language um and if you like reading <laughs> i mean this is me trying to like read when i'm not really a reader you know oh, oh although i should tell you this uh so I think I clocked 78 books for the end of last year. So that was kind of cool. Um, but most of them were nonfiction. That was my, that's my thing, nonfiction, really, because it's ideas. Yeah, Sagittarius rising. Um, so, yeah, anyway, um, like my friend, she does 100 books every year and I'm like I don't know how you do that because like I haven't got the brain space for it or the time or the well it's not so much time it's it's mostly headspace and focus because but then I'm realizing that fiction takes a lot less brain space and it's kind of a little bit like reading uh watching Netflix similar kind of like in terms of the concentration of the brain capacity that you need in order to do it I have Oh my God, Mel did 142 last year. That's amazing. That's so cool. <laughs> I'm in awe. I don't know how you guys do it. Um, so I have like panels on my on on, on this browser that I use. Um, that that have like the different categories of things and how much brain focus, what kind of focus they need. And there are some that fall into like the super focus, which I only do first thing in the morning. And there are some that like language learning or like reading Ray Dalio or whatever. And then there are all these other categories that have, um, you know, different levels of stuff. So like movies that I have to watch or um, uh, that's not including audio books. Oh my God. Oh my God. I think I would probably die if I had to do that. 142. I could. I couldn't. Like my. I don't think my eyes could literally like scan over that many words. It. It just wouldn't happen. Anyway, um, my brain gets tired. My brain gets tired. So I have to, you know, give it that. So anyway, um, Alan, who I don't think is here right now, um, had said uh, about the foundation so i was already reading the foundation because of uh treconomics so the guy manu who um wrote treconomics recommended and talked about the foundation by isaac asimov in um uh in treconomics in the actual book and i was like oh that sounds good enough like to to go and tackle and uh oh my god it's amazing it's um it's kind of uh one of these big sweeping kind of civilizations, like generation by generation kind of um, evolution of different forces, like the focusing on different dynamics within the civilization, you know, like moving from trade, to, from religion to trade, to war, to whatever, really pretty intense kind of thinking. And I just devoured that, like, so fast um, and then I moved on to the second book and I was mentioning this in the uh, Patreon group and uh, Alan had said oh you need to read I Robot the whole like book that's because it's like a series of short stories right um, 
that are put into to one. And oh, hi, Michael. Hi, hi. Good evening. Um, afternoon, morning, <laughs> wherever you are. Um, and so um, I was, I'm, I'm, I read through iRobot and like some of those ideas were pretty good. I like the way that he tackles actual ideas. And oh my God, how refreshing is it to read science fiction written by an actual physicist who understands the words that he's using? It's so fucking cool. It's amazing. I'm loving Isaac Asimov. So anyway, um, so I've done I, I robot and now I'm reading on on um, Alan's recommendation the the third one and I'm second guessing myself and I'm like he said to like read this one at this particular read I robot before you read the last one and so I'm looking for like oh what about the concepts that they, they discussed in the in the I robot one and uh so I'm kind of preempting like going oh I figured it all out and then like something happens it's like oh no it's clearly not by it's something else <laughs> so I don't know it's like spoiler it's spoilers are a little bit like uh prophecies you know like the these kind of um uh, yeah, like prophecies, like not to dramas and stuff. It's like, oh, such and such and such and such. And you're like, then you start looking for it and you're looking for it in places where it's clearly not going to be. And then you start making different decisions and you, you kind of screw yourself up over like prophecies, kind of like they're doing in Deep Space Nine, right? Um, so, yeah, my very own like experience of prophecy within a, an alternate reality that doesn't even exist. This is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with anything. So if you have questions or comments about anything that we've talked about, go ahead and whack them into the, the chat. Um, we've reached, reached the half hour mark and all I've done is just run through my list of things that I wanted to say. I think I should probably get into the habit of doing this more regularly. Um, Similarly, let me know if you want to do the the uh, piano, live, hang, whatnot, watch me call it, singing, whatnots, and I'll plan for that. Although I'm I'm quite enjoying having the practice time, like to not feel like I have to, um, like it's carbs of steel, caves of steel. This is Asimov, is it? Is this another one that I need to check out? Potentially. Um, so yeah, um, yeah. Let me know about that. If you can do me a favor and like the video, whatnot, that helps other people to find it. Um, that'll be cool. Um, yeah, let, let me know about the Facebook hang, and we'll return to that. Let me know about Bentley, and we'll we'll do that. Okay, uh, you're saying yes to the Asimov thing. Thanks, Mel. Caves of Steel. If this can help me kind of get through my like 100 books, I'm not going to actually do 100 books, I don't think. I'm not going to plan to. I'm going to at least do 70 again this year. Um, but yeah, I'm finding that the, uh, the these are, they're useful because they're um, at this higher level of thought. So it triggers like lots of ideas and thinking and like the next iteration of of concepts because like Asimov wouldn't have had social media to deal with right and so we can use those concepts on top of where we're already at and and so on um so I feel like all of a sudden fiction has become like productive time rather than like avoidance procrastination time <laughs> and it adds to my you know 70 books a year kind of thing so I, I might do a bit more um that said don't don't send me too many recommendations I've really got like so many lists I've got like, 300 and something on my uh to be read urgently pile and I've got um a whole I don't know how many on a list that the Patreon guys have been saying like you've got to read these they're like I'm not gonna get through them guys sorry um but at least they're there for reference so yeah anyway that's that Cool. All right, folks. Well, um, we've got no more comments coming through, so we will wrap this up. Um, and I'll look forward to seeing you very soon. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the reading the books. Thank you for like talking to me on social media and uh, making uh, life a little bit more bearable, bearable during the chaos. Uh, you're amazing. And 
Oh, Michael's saying, with this lockdown, my hair is just as much sh shorter than Elle's. <laughs> oh, well, it's it's better to have long hair than it is to risk, you know, getting infected. So, you know, you, you do the right thing, grow, growing your hair long in these troubling times. <laughs> cool. All right. Good to see you guys. Good to see you too, Mel. All right. I'll talk to you very soon. All right. Ciao. Bye for now.